Hey, it's Matt, and welcome to another video. This time, if you need to migrate Markdown to ASCII docs specifically, if you want to get away from Markdown and sort of embrace the far, 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 perhaps if only in my humble opinion, richer format that ASCII doc is, then there is a tool designed specifically to do just that, and it's called Cramdoc. In this video, I'm going to show you a bit about what it is and how to use it, along with getting it installed. Right, so here we are in the terminal. But before we can install Cramdoc, I have to say one thing, which is that I'm assuming that you have Ruby installed, like a, a, real, a relatively recent version. If you don't, head on over to all the w's.ruby-lang.org forward slash en forward slash documentation forward slash installation. You can see the URL here on the screen and there you will find all the details for installing Ruby on your operating system of choice, whether Mac OS, Linux or Windows. Now from this point on, I'll assume that you have it. And what we're going to do is run the relevant command, which is gem install cram down ASCII doc. Now, that would work if you have, say you're on Linux and you have pseudo privileges or you're an admin user on Windows. So let's just assume you're not and sort of cover all bases here. And we'll say that we're going to do a user install, which just means that it will install the gem in, in the repository for the particular user that you're logged in as and save hassles of root level privileges and those sorts of things. You can see here, if all goes well, that it has successfully installed version 1.0.1 .1 of Cramdown ASCII doc and everything's ready to go. Now, what I'm also going to assume is that you've installed gems previously. So you've got the gem bin path. You've got the gem bin directory in your path. You may have to restart your terminal as well. Let's just assume we've done all that and we can say which cram doc. And you can see here, that I've got it installed. Assuming that all went well, let's just clear away a bit of that. And now let's have a look at some of the options that Cramdoc supports. So we'll put the H option there. And you can see here, it's a little bit to read, but you can see here if we step through them that it gives you the option to specify the output file to write the ASCII doc to, to pick one of the sort of major markdown formats, such as GFM, which is GitHub flavored markdown, Cramdown, or Markdown. You can set one or several attributes in the file. You can determine what kind of wrapping that you're going to do, such as preserve that, preserve the wrapping in the source Markdown file, not do any wrapping, or do what's called ventilate. This is to implement ventilated prose. Now, in short, what this is, is that it will put every sentence on a new line. If in the original Markdown, it's been split over several lines, it will then join the sentence back together. I'll have a link to Ventilated Prose in the show notes. It's an awesome thing to do to use if you're writing lots of content. It just makes writing and maintaining technical documentation so much easier. Anyway, skipping on, we can set the images directory attribute. We can set the heading offset and look at generating IDs for all of the section titles. Now, if you want, take some time after this, go through these in a bit more detail, have a bit of an experiment and a play and see what happens for you. And I'll also link to relevant information or sections of the ASCII doc user manual where you can find out loads and loads and loads more about this. For right now though, what we're going to do is we're going to migrate some Markdown content. So here you can see I have a number of Markdown files. So let's have a look at one. We'll say the branching workflow. Actually, we're not going to use cat. We're going to use Vim because it does a good bit of Markdown highlighting. Seeing that, if we pop up to the top, you can see we've got our top level header. We've got an image here, then we've got a paragraph. And then we've got a list with some inline code. We've got a link, another paragraph, some more links and so on. And if we just scroll down, you can see if I pause for a moment, we've got kind of a range of, of general markdown formatting. So let's quit out of that. And now let's use Cramdoc to convert it. So we'll say cramdoc and we'll say that the format is GitHub flavored markdown, which is the case because I wrote, which I wrote these files specifically to be rendered on GitHub. Then let's say that the output is going to be in the same directory and we'll use the same name only. We're just going to obviously change the extension. So we're going to say that it is the branching workflow 
They will put the ADOC extension, which is one of the ASCII doc best practices. We'll then say that we're going to do ventilated wrapping. And finally, we'll specify the source file, which is the branching workflow.md. We'll run that, and you can see that there's no output because it's not really necessary. So now if we use Vim again, and we'll say the branching workflow.adoc, you can see that, kind of unexcitedly really, but that it has worked. There you can see that we've got now an ASCII doc top level header identified by the prefixed equal sign. We've now converted the original image We've converted the markdown image link to an ASCII doc link. We've got the paragraphs as before. We've now got the ASCII doc list prefix identifier, which is the asterisk instead of a hyphen. We've now got an admonition. Those things are totally awesome, by the way. Definitely check them out if you don't know about them. We've now got an ASCII doc style link. We've now got another paragraph, second level header, and so on and so on and so forth down the page. So it wasn't really sort of complex formatting so there wasn't sort of much to to take into account let's clear the screen let's look again and you can see here that we have how many do we have we have star can we do this star dot md now correction we put ls in front and you can see that we have 10 markdown files so now so naturally, if you had, I guess, even more than a handful, you're not going to manually run the command each time. And perhaps you have rather a sort of sophisticated or, or a deep nested level of f markdown f source files. You're not going to go through that by hand, right? So you probably use something like find to get all the files. And then you would pass that list of files through to cramdoc, perhaps using finds exec option or maybe xargs. Let's go for a sort of slightly funky one. And let's sort of pop into an editor here to edit the command. And let's say that we're going to do find, and we'll look in the current directory. And I'll say that the name of the file, or basically say that any file with a .md extension is the file that we want to filter down on. And then we're going to make sure that it only finds files and not sort of directories that might have been misnamed. And then, so that will give us, that will sort of find all of the markdown files in this directory and then anywhere below it. Then we're going to pass that through to xargs, which is a pretty awesome tool. That will then run our command once for every file that is in the list of files that find finds. And we're going to say that, oh, sorry, this will be our, our identifier for the file name in uh, when we call cramdoc. And then we're going to say, for every file, we're going to call the following bash command, which is what we saw before, slightly changed. We're going to say cramdoc, and we'll say that the format is GitHub flavored markdown, and then we're going to have it support ventilated wrapping, and then we're going to say that the output will be the original file name as indicated by the, the kind of identifier there, but with an ASCII doc extension. And our source file is going to be the file name that it's found. If we then save that, you can see here it's popped back on the command line, so we're ready to run it. And all being well, it will work. A little bit of time's passed. Let's now pull up the ls command from before, but we'll change it to ASCII doc and see if we have 10 files. Seems we have 11, that's interesting. What have we got here? Ah, I see. We've actually converted the one from before twice. So that's not to worry. So anyway, if we just have a look in sort of one of those. We'll say vim the build pipeline dot adoc, sorry, dot md dot adoc. And you see here that just as before is converted the file. I'll assume that everything's gone well and say that is how to use cramdoc to migrate one or any number of markdown files to ASCII doc. If you have any questions, queries or whatnot, you will find links to everything I've talked about in the show notes for this video. As always, 
click the bell to be notified for any f future videos. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. If you do either of those things, or if you subscribe, it lets me know that you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it. Otherwise, leave your comments, leave your thoughts. What did you think? And I'll see you in a future video.